Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is November 11th, 2016. And I have a video that I've put together today. And it is taken from an excerpt from Marshall Masters' newest video that he published about a week ago. And in this video, Marshall talks about the debunking of Planet X Nibiru videos and photographs. It's very important that you listen very closely to what he has to say. Marshall has years of investigating Planet X. I also have a lot of respect for Marshall Masters because he is a driven man and driven to find the truth. So sit back, pay close attention, and here we go. I find it interesting that debunkers tend to ignore hoaxes like the one that Fluters posted. And they immediately go for observations that seem to ring true with people. So let's see how the debunkers attacked the Brazil observations. Here we see three debunking videos by Dark Energy, D5UNCR, and Dazza the Cameraman. All three use the same exact debunking attack. They focus on a brief moment of time just before the object of interest crests the mountains in the far field of view. These debunkers treat the object's halo no differently than the object, which serves their agenda because the object's halo briefly appears in front of land and sometimes in front of the water as well. All three debunkers present this as incontrovertible proof of a lens flare. So, are they right? As with the Fluter's hoax video, let's consider the source, because there is a real difference between a debunker and a good cynic. A good cynic is looking for the truth, whereas debunkers simply want to have their ego stroked, and they'll take any cheap shot to get it. For this reason, do not become totally focused on what they're showing you. Rather, look for what they're not showing you. To prove the point, let's look at an example. Here we see a picture where the moisture of the fog is causing the sun to appear in front of a landmass, and arguably in front of the water as well. Keeping this in mind, please note that Sao Vicente, Brazil has a coastal humid climate, and that all of the observations we have for April and September are very early in the morning at sunrise, a time when coastal residents will tell you to expect morning fog. And fog can be simply defined as a cloud on the ground. Therefore, this raises a simple question. Is it possible for the extreme moisture of morning fog to bend light? As you see in this inset image, light can and does bend. A good cynic would have made this point, but debunkers like Dazza the cameraman are not interested in seeking the truth. They are agenda-driven people who want to sling mud so as to stroke their own egos. So, assuming for the moment that we had a video by a good cynic, would they have been looking at other things in the video as well that are difficult to explain? Yes, and one of them would have been infrared sensitivity. One of the things that is difficult with modern digital cameras is that some are sensitive to infrared and others are not. I discussed this with Richard Shaw of Pinlight Productions in Hollywood, and he did a quick test for me using a Sony remote with his own iPhone 5S and GoPro Hero 3 Plus cameras. What his test shows is that while his iPhone camera is not sensitive to infrared, his GoPro camera is. Regrettably, we do not know the exact model of camera used by the Sao Vicente feed, nor are we able to test it to see if it is in fact sensitive in the infrared range. 
Consequently, all we can do is speculate about infrared sensitivity as a possible explanation. And then there is another thorny question. The object of interest is only observed in the months of April and September. So, why is it not observed throughout the entire year? Let's ponder that one. As we saw earlier, the view from Earth's horizon is not the same as the view of the ecliptic from space. The ecliptic being the plane of our solar system. In this animation, we see the tilt of Earth's axis relative to the ecliptic as our planet orbits the Sun. While this tilt is 23.5 degrees at present, it does vary over time. During a cycle that averages about 40,000 years, the tilt varies between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. The point here is that Earth's orbit around the Sun is not an absolute constant, as some would assume. It would therefore stand to reason that the same holds true for Helion, the innermost planet in orbit around our Sun's sister star, Nemesis. This then raises an interesting possibility. If we are only seeing Helion in April and in September, could it be that Helion's elliptical orbit around Nemesis is six months long, according to our calendar? This could possibly explain why we see Helion from Sal Vicente in the months of April and September. But then again, there is Occam's razor. All things being equal, the simplest solution tends to be the best one. So, what would that be? That April and September are the two months of the year when celestial alignments allow us a brief glimpse of the object of interest at sunrise. So with that, let's cut to the chase and ask the question that is no doubt on your mind. Is there a smoking gun? Yes, there is a smoking gun. And this is exactly the kind of evidence that an agenda-driven debunker like Dazza the Cameraman does not want you to see. But see it now. You will. We have smoking gun direct evidence thanks to reports by Downsizing Oahu LLC on April the 4th and 7th and another report by Dave B., on September 15th of this year. What these three observation reports from April and September offer is direct evidence that disproves the debunking argument of Daza the cameraman and others who maintain that the object of interest is a lens flare. Keep in mind that lens flares occur just in front of or inside the lens itself. Ergo, when you see clouds passing across an object of interest in a gradual and natural way, you know it is behind the cloud. In other words, when you see a cloud moving in front of an object so that it becomes obscured, it cannot be called a lens flare. That being said, one of the videos you see here by Dave B., is without question the pick of the litter. So let's take a closer look at it. In his video refuting the debunking argument of Daza the cameraman and others, Dave B. does what we call a shuttle jog. He goes forward and then backwards to conclusively illustrate that the object of interest is not a lens flare. This is important because what we're seeing in all the different observation reports in this program is two things. They come from all across the globe and they consistently show us an object of interest to the right of the sun at its three o'clock relative to the horizon. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Marshall Masters giving you his feedback on Planet X debunking. Now, this Dave the Cameraman has been at this for quite some time. He has targeted my channel for the last two months. 
But once again, we will continue on and we will seek the truth. Even when we produce photographs such as what is going across your screen, taken by a Mexican astronomer using sophisticated equipment, we will still be called liars, we will still be called fear mongers, and no matter what we do, the debunkers will be right there on our tail. Because that is what they are paid and ordered to do. They have an agenda the same as we do. However, their agenda is depopulization. Our agenda is life. And please make sure that you stay tuned to the Nibiru channel because we will be bringing you more and more evidence as time goes on. And with that said, I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers and subscribers. Your loyalty is greatly appreciated. I'd also like to remind you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Nibiru channel and share all of our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget, you can still email your photographs and videos to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. Your videos and photographs are very important. We would also like to remind you that you should come back to the Nibiru channel daily for all of our current updates. Create a bookmark or a direct link to the Nibiru channel. Planet X 2016. This is vital to stay informed. And as you go through life and your day to day, always remember keep an eye in the sky.